Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, that is Connor and this is our weekly TV news show. We Obviously we talk about this week's TV news, new shows coming up and development pilots being ordered, especially this time of year there's pilots being ordered left and right, we've got a bunch of them this week. Uh, we also use this to give any updates or plug any sort of TV reviews that have just went up or coming up next week. Uh, at the end of the show we pick our favourite TV episode of the week and that's basically the gist of it, that's what we do. Uh, it tends to be a bit, bit of a rambles, bit of a shambles. Uh, and something else that rhymes with ambles. On the upside, though, I don't think Cora remembers what I agreed to do last night when he was absolutely blind drunk. So, oh, oh, I think I do. I uh, have a sneaking suspicion that I do know what this is. No, no I don't think you do. I, I think you've forgotten. I'll, I'll, I'll deny it anyway. You won't know for sure if you if it's the thing that you actually think I'm talking about. Oh, oh. this this is a watching certain some things, isn't it? It may have been. There may have been multiples of that, though. You you, you don't remember. No, no, no. That's true. I was really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> at one point, you said you were pointing at your face and you were pointing at your neck. So you know. That's close enough. Uh huh. Aye. Well, maybe 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 in your case, because the brain's not as. I'm not gonna lie. M- missing a bunch of information from last night. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, watched Arrow together last night, and Connor got drunk, of course. As, as he I, I does. remember them saying, "Are you okay?" A lot. <laughs> And, and, and not much else. <laughs> uh, that'll be interesting when we get to the uh, the TV DC podcast. It'll, it'll, at the end of the it'll week. fill back in by the time I get there. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, so, in terms of updates, in terms of what... Obviously, there was a couple of pilots this week, a couple of premieres. Uh, we had Counterpart from Stars, which is the, the J.K. Simmons uh, the Parallel Earth, Parallel Universe show, where he sort of encounters his, well, his counterpart, hence the title of the show. Uh, we fairly enjoyed that. Uh, the review of that first episode's up. We also had the first episode of The Alienist from TNT, which we weren't so hot on. We're not going to do the episode two. It was, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it was very lukewarm, typical murder mystery. Uh, yeah. Just set in, you know, that that time period. That's basically it. Just happened to have a good cast. Yeah, basically. A good, good production value, but that's kind of it. The direction and the story are kind of just typical. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, so that that was that. Uh, so that was basically the new stuff this week. Uh, worth mentioning, and admittedly we should have the news done before this happens next week, but it is probably worth mentioning that our next Netflix show, Altered Carbon, is beginning next Friday uh, in a week. So... We, we are excited. We are excited. I, I, I have this real worry it's going to disappoint me. I don't know why. You've you kind of overhyped it a bit. I, I, no, I think it, I still don't know I've overhyped it necessarily. I think it's because Joel Kinnaman, who's in it, was in The Killing, and that also sounded really good and ended up being terrible. So it's it's, it's not his fault. He's fine, but I see his face and I'm just worried. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just, this is a strange link. But I see his face and I think of that and I, I'm just hoping the writing's up to par. That's that's my thing. It, visually, it looks great. The trailers have been fantastic. But yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll be working our way through that uh, and I, I, starting next Friday, basically. Uh, and hopefully going at one per day, uh, give or take. Uh, assume the schedule is. I'm just, I'm just like, glancing at it and uh, just I, seeing... I think that's probably the plan. But... Yeah. Uh, but hey, so that's what's coming. That's, that's it for the updates. There was no, nothing else here. Just, uh, obviously, we're doing a movie news show as well. Uh, that comes uh, early on Sunday. Uh, we'll be recording that later tonight. So, uh, yeah. There you go. That's, that's, that's all the news and stuff. Oh, not all the news, sorry. <laughs> we're just not even got to the <laughs> news yet. Say, all right. Oh, that was a quick show this week. That, that's all the channel news uh, for the week. Yeah. Uh, Onto the actual TV news of the week. Uh, so we, we got things, we got things. Uh, so starting with the quick stuff, as we typically do, we have uh, cancellations uh, to talk to talk about. Uh, now, we gave up in this show after one episode, so I, I expect cheers uh, from the room. But uh, Damnation was cancelled by USA Network uh, after its first season. Um, by me. Yeah, we weren't into it. Uh, you know, I really like Logan Marshall Green. I hope he gets a good show now <laughs> because he's great. But yep. goddamn, that show was not that great. And interestingly, they've also cancelled a show that's not even been shot yet. They 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 greenlit something to series and they've now cancelled it before the you know they've said no, nah, we're not doing it. But I'm calling it a cancellation because I think it's funny to say it's been cancelled before it even starts. Yeah. But uh, interestingly, this was the show called American Rust, which we said sounded a lot like Damnation meets the Sun. And we weren't that excited about it. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah. Okay. But they've, uh, you know, decided against it. It's not happening now. So I wonder if it is. They're going. Do you know what? This is kind of similar to Damnation. People aren't into that right now. Uh, yeah, we're canceling that. So why would we greenlight this when it feels tonally very similar? 
yeah. it was from the same guy, it was the same novelist who also wrote the book uh, that the Sun's based on, which we also had very similar feelings about on AMC. Mm-hmm. Although I think that's getting a season two on AMC. I think, I think that did a bit better. But maybe that's just a sign that only one of these can survive <laughs> at any one point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and trying to have two or three, which would have been, uh, was maybe not the, the wisest move. Yeah. Uh, Here's a, here's a surprising bit of quick news. Uh, we got a premiere date for something that I was not expecting a premiere date for for a while. Oh? Yes, I was, we were expecting this in the summer because they told us summer, but we have a premiere for Timeless Season 2. We do? And it's it's not the summer? I mean, maybe on a Hollywood schedule you can count this as summer? Because, <laughs> you know, summer season... What are we thinking, like May? No, I'm thinking, this is March. No, no, even by Hollywood... It is. Summer. It is. The blockbusters start in March now. They've basically uh, said right. summer they... starts in March. That's a thing now. <laughs> no, blockbusters start in March, but summer doesn't. They're not. They're not summer blockbusters yet. They're just like they're, okay. These are the early ones. I'll admit the fact that they're stretching it to February this year with Black Panther says that yeah, we can't really use that word anymore. But that is essentially what happened. It was like no, May to August were the summer movie season, and then they started bleeding into April, and then they bled into March a couple of years ago, and yeah, yeah. But hey, so yeah, Timeless Season 2 starting March 11th. Cool. That's cool. I'm, glad it, I, I'm, I'm st- still shocked that this exists based on you know what happened with that. The other surprising part of this announcement is that it's going to be back on at 10pm, which is odd because when we got the, oh, it's not been cancelled, it's re-renewed, uh, basically they said, oh, we're going to lighten it up a little bit, it'll be on an earlier time slot in the summer, and now it's not the summer, and it's back at 10pm, which is very suspicious. Uh, my, my guess as to what's going on here... Here's my here's my here's my what I think's happened here. Well, I think NBC have had a lot more stinkers this season than they were expecting, and they need something to come in and save the day. Quite possibly, yeah. Uh, now, admittedly, I don't know how much saving the day timeless will necessarily do, given that they, they were lukewarm on it last season and it got cancelled. I wonder anyway. if it's had good, you know, like Netflix numbers or whatever uh, over yeah, the year, yeah. and they've yeah. gone. Do you know what? This has got an audience. Maybe we were a bit quick. And maybe if we leave it as it is and not try and water it down, maybe it'll end up better in the long run for them as well. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit here by thinking that they have some foresight. But Yeah, I'd be more inclined to think they just need it for the schedule because they cancelled too many things. That Probably, didn't work out. but that, that doesn't line up with the, the, the later time slot necessarily because they could juggle anything around. Oh, sure, but I think it's on. Like, I know the premiere's on after a three-hour premiere or something else. Uh, Oh, it's, it's what, what, three hour premiere yeah it's one of those uh, a, you know athletic game show things I, I, I can't remember which one it is though you know I've no idea what you're on about sorry uh, was that amazing that's not amazing race but it was you know, it's one of, one of those things uh, American Ninja <laughs> that, Warrior or that, something like that I, I don't know oh okay one, one of, of these things <laughs> one of those okay yeah I'm, I'm sorry, for a, lot of t- a long time there, you kind of, it's one of those things. I'm like, yeah. I was just trying to think of examples, and I kept going to you like gladiators, but no, that's, that's ancient. I, I need something a bit more current. Oh, but if you told me a lot like gladiators, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. If Even, yeah. Was, like, that said, sort of though, I don't recall gladiators be having theater premieres, but, you know, whatever. Oh, which, is why, which is why I think it's one that has like a running competition with the same contestants, because it's more like a big opening, because they're going to be there all season, competing yeah. kind of thing. Uh but that's besides the point. The point is, it's after that, and then it's after something else the following week. I think I think it's just a case because keep in mind, uh, NBC schedule for you know three hours a night of prime time. So yeah. uh, I think it's just maybe that's where it fits. Uh, yeah, it so uh, interesting to see what they do with it. I, we we quite enjoyed season one where it went. We're glad it's coming back because they left us in a damn cliffhanger. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we we were annoyed when it got cancelled for about a week, if that. Th- it was like three days. Three days, yeah. yeah. And then we were like, oh, it's back. And then, you know, there's a little worry that, okay, maybe it's watered down, but at least we're going to get an answer to our cliffhanger. And now it's even earlier than we expected. So, yay. Yeah. So, who knows what's going on there, but excited to have it back. So that's uh, coming back much sooner than expected. I hope we get no more news about it because it gives me whiplash. (laughs) The next news will be, no, it's been delayed. It's not coming until July. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Alright, and then last up on the quickish stuff, uh, we got a full trailer for 7 Seconds, which is Netflix's sort of later February show. Uh, it's coming on February 23rd. We knew that. We had a, like, a brief teaser uh, like a month ago, but it was it was literally like, t- 20 seconds of just someone looking at snow. <laughs> like, you know, that's all I remember from it. It and, didn't really count. 
And that shot was on this trailer, to be fair. Like, I, I saw that shot and went, oh, yeah, I remember that from the, the teaser. Yep, very yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, where this is a full trailer, let's give us like, a full scope of what the show's really about. Um, I spotted, I can't remember her name, uh, from Leftovers, season two and three. Oh, okay. Uh, John's wife. Yeah, yeah. I spotted, I spotted her in there, so it's just a nice, nice face to see. Uh, but we, so this is obviously a very topical show. The the, the whole plot is about. Uh, now I, I don't think I initially got this from when I, I read the descriptions. I think I assumed it was a shooting kind of uh, like very topical. I mean, it's still very topical, but you know, I thought it was specifically a shooting kind of like what you hear in the news. Whereas the the trailers, no, no, this, this white cop accidentally runs down a black teenager, but then covers it up. And it's all about the investigation, uh, but obviously a lot of the racial tensions there. And there's a lot of, like, you know, the, the, the other white cops try to, like, talk him into covering it up and trying to help him. And then you've got this black detective who's trying to solve the case. And, you know, presumably, eventually, those those plots will clash uh, in the season. Uh, very dramatic trailer. Um, as for my opinions on it, uh, it could be good. I think my, my concern looking at the trailer is how bleak and depressing this show might be. <laughs> Yeah, it, it looks all right. Don't get me wrong. It looks like a very typical drama, as opposed to. It, it does. It doesn't look like it's got anything that makes me it really stand out. That I oh, I need to watch this. Yeah, I, I think there. I mean, this is the thing where if the direction's really good and it's just got it's it's really sort of you know heavy main topic, it could just be a very good straight drama. Yeah, that's inter- entirely possible. Uh, but there's certainly not a hook in terms of like. You know, when I see a trailer for Altered Carbon, I'm like, okay, so I've got a cyberpunk TV show, so it's the visuals that are the hook in that trailer. When I see a, a trailer for, say, Lemony Snickers, a series of see unfortunate events, it's the quirky humour that's the hook. Uh, when I see this, and it's just this dramatic music, and there's a lot of people crying, I said music, music. Uh, when there's a lot of people crying, and there's court cases and stuff, uh, like, okay, I, I have to try this to see if I like it. I, I, I there's, don't... there's less to judge on because yeah. of, of the way the trailer is inherently cut. Yeah. Like, you know, it, this could be incredibly slow and bloated. Yeah, or it, or could, it be, could be excellent. It could be masterfully directed and it could be like this thing yeah. where every performance is a tour de force and I'm like sucked into the, the drama of it all. But it could go either way. It's hard to tell. So we'll definitely be trying first episode when it hits uh, on the 23rd of February. Uh, whether we do the whole show just kind of depends on how we feel after that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Netflix shows do have a, a tendency, uh, obviously there's been some good ones, but like when I think of this, the straight dramas, I think of Ozark and that was like slow as balls and didn't interest yeah. us that much. Yeah, they they like I feel like they go, okay, it's on Netflix. You're gonna binge it, yeah. so they kind of take their time more than they should. Yeah, even the early seasons of House of Cards, which you know people like more than the later seasons, uh, I still felt were slow at times. I still felt like, oh, this could be cut down to ten episodes instead of thirteen or something. Yeah. You know, so well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and this is a ten episode season, so I mean, it's already cut down from thirteen. So good on them for that. <laughs> Don't stretch yeah, out. it'll all be down to the running time of the episode. So they could be, oh, they could true. all be, you know, you know, hour and five minutes. They, they, that's for all true. We know. Uh, what they should have done, because since it's called seven seconds, it should be seven episodes at seventy minutes. Go with the gimmick. Go for it. Go full head on in. No, no. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, that's why the new season of Twenty Four should be twenty four episodes at twenty four minutes. <laughs> But they just have they just happen to air them as doubles. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> okay, still still going to be less than twelve hours of real time, but uh, that's fine. Yeah, no, I'm I'm getting it, but I'm like, okay, but the two of them together, it's you know, close a, to a, a regular episode length. That's a good point. I'm just actually, I just made a joke about that. I'm thinking how different Twenty Four would be on a streaming service because there'd be no ad because the ad breaks are accounted for in the real time so that's kind of how they're justifying that show oh you never see anyone go to the bathroom oh it happens in the ad breaks because there is time that passes during those yeah. breaks and I'm just thinking about it now that if they made it for a streaming service they'd have to yeah, yeah they'd have to actually like legitimately make it entirely real time and see every single hour in full that'd be hard as balls it'd be hard as balls I'd almost love to see that that'd be the one thing that'd maybe excite me about another 24 reboot is if they were going to do it in a streaming service and they had to do everything just, just to see. It'd, it'd be, it'd be nice to see the challenge. Yeah, just to see how they pull it off and if they can actually keep it entertaining. Admittedly, I wasn't really that fond of the the legacy no. one they, they, they tried. I, with, I feel but... like they did that. It would definitely feel bloated and like it was really forced because you know you, yeah. you're not you're not losing much to ad breaks, but just enough that okay, it gives it a pace. You're not seeing every second. 
Yeah, yeah, it's probably impossible, really. I, I think, um, I think that's where like twenty four. Ultimately, if you want to get going, I, I think a movie is a better idea because it's not as bloated. Basically, have like a Die Hard movie in real time. You know, it's two hours. Yeah. You know, I, I think that could be a fun action movie. But hey, uh, we're not here to talk about movies. We'll do that in the movie news in a little bit. Uh, but hey, so that's all the quick stuff. Uh, let's move on. Now we don't we don't cover this show anymore, and I've not watched it since episode three of this se- current season. But I thought I'd mention Riverdale. Uh, I figured you'd be uh, interested to hear that they're doing a musical episode. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be based around Carrie the Musical. And that is Stephen King's Carrie, not not anything else. Uh, yeah, I thought that, and then I was like, huh, okay. Do you know what is? I read Carrie the Musical, and I thought, is this a Sex in the City thing? Not, not that my mind would normally go to Sex in the City when I hear the name Carrie, but because it's Riverdale. No, no, as he was saying, on- honestly, I forgot that that exists. I'll be honest, I think I only even know that her name's Carrie in Sex and the City because I saw it be someone tweet about it like three days ago. I couldn't have told you if you'd asked me. Like, you say that, you, you say it and I go, yeah, I know that's right. I don't yeah. question it. I'm like, yeah, that, that fits in what I've heard in the past. But if you'd asked me to name someone from it. I actually think I can. I can name, I think one's called Samantha. I don't know what one it is. I know one's Samantha. Do you know what? You're right. And I, I don't know what it's from. <laughs> I've got I've got something in my mind of you know like a joke someone saying oh you're such a Samantha ah yeah yeah I can see that. and you're a Carrie and you're a yeah, whoever I've the got, two I've, are. I've watched something <laughs> that's made that joke yeah. before I know I don't know what I know Kim Cattrall plays one of them I don't know <laughs> what her character's name is no no why, why are we talking about this oh yeah Carrie the musical episode it's going to have eleven songs and it's going to be played as a as a documentary made by Jughead. It's basically the school's putting on Carrie the Musical, and he's going to be making a documentary about so it. So it's a, a musical mockumentary. Yeah, but apparently they've got 11 songs, which is quite that's, a lot for... quite a lot for 40 minutes, yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll have a slightly extended episode for, for this. You know, kind of like how the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer did for Once More With Feeling. That had like a 60-something minute runtime. All right, there we go. We're done now. <laughs> so easy. Uh, to be honest, that, that one is easy when you got a musical episode in the yeah, news. Such a softball. Uh, that's going to air on April 18th. So, uh, not too far away. Uh, yeah. So you can look forward to that. If, you, if you're enjoying the show and you like musical episodes, uh, and honestly, it feels like the type of show that should probably have a musical episode. It's, it's the type of bubbly teen cast that probably should start singing at some point. Uh, will I it's ever fair. catch up and watch it? kind of baked into it as well. Yeah, there's constantly songs. It's, it's not Smallville bad. <laughs> But there is a lot of songs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but hey, so next up, we got a couple of casting tidbits here. Uh, you might know who this is from Game of Thrones. Hannah Weddingham? Or sorry, uh, Weddingham. I thought it was Weddingham. I, I thought it was an E. Name reason. doesn't ring a bell, but... Uh, but yes, she's from Game of Thrones, apparently. Uh, she's been cast in Krypton, uh, the sci-fi show, which is coming Oh up. yeah, that's still happening. That's coming in March, I believe, as well. we got stuff coming in March. Prepare yourself. <laughs> uh so she's going to play Jack Sewer, uh, or Jack's R. Actually, I really should know how to pronounce that. Being a Superman fan, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not super familiar with this character. Uh, but as a character from the comics, uh, from mythology, uh, typically it's been a male role, but they've uh, went with a female for this. So, you know, okay, whatever. I don't think it makes much of a difference, but so that's cool enough. Uh, and is formerly one of Krypton's greatest scientists with deep ties into Krypton's past Jaxar is known as is now determined to bring radical change to Krypton as leader of the underground terrorist organisation Black Zero I don't know if they're typically as villainous as that because uh, that sounds quite villainous it does sound quite villainous doesn't it I have no idea what this show is going to be like I know they keep, they keep Adam Strange, Hawkwoman <laughs> Superman's every, grandfather! Every time I hear something, I have different opinions. And I'm like, how is this all in one show? That'll be a fascinating pilot discussion when it happens. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely a little bit excited to see it. Just because I, I just want to know what this looks like now. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, Jack Sir. <laughs> There you go. Uh, so that's Krypton. Uh, sticking with comic book TV shows briefly, we have a bit of casting for Daredevil Season 3. Um, Joanne Wally has been uh, set to star in the show. Uh, and they've not confirmed who she's playing, but there's some pretty solid speculation 
as to as to who it's going to be based on how Defenders ended, because it's kind of set up what the plot was going to be for season three of Daredevil, and everyone's thinking it's going to be set uh, based on Born Again, the, uh, the, the 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 classic Daredevil stories from the eighties, uh, and you know the, the the last line of Defenders, I guess minor spoilers or major spoilers for Defenders if you if you've not seen it, but the last line of Defenders was get Maggie, tell her he's awake, tell her she's awake, um, so we're pre- presuming Maggie, uh, sister Maggie from the comic series. Uh, and Sister Maggie nurses Matt Murdock back to full health. Oh, and she's... That's a very jovial written article, actually, because, oh, and she's a has a close family connection to in the comics, so that may be thrown to the small screen in the mix. Uh, who's the close family connection? It doesn't actually tell me. It's like teasing that she's got like a family connection to someone who's important in Marvel. Yeah, spoilers, bro. <sighs> oh, I don't give a shit. Uh... I, I thought it was worth reminding everyone that Daredevil Season 3 is a thing, and it, it does exist. Cause it, 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 it's coming eventually, it yeah. Feel, yeah, it feels like we don't really talk about it much, but uh, I think we're expecting that late this year. Are we? Yeah, because I don't, thought... don't, I mean, don't we have to have Iron Fist before we have Daredevil? I'm pretty sure Daredevil was renewed before Iron Fist was. Yeah, I think it was, but I'm just thinking of the way Defenders left things, logically speaking. Yeah, true. And to be fair, yeah, I think there's been set photos of Iron Fist, and there's not been any of Daredevil yet. Oh, that's true, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I think you may be right. I think it may be Iron Fist that we get later this year, which is insane that we get that a year later after the first one. Yeah. Oh, no. It was 2017, a year later. It was last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I mean, it feels like longer. Time, time flies when you don't have to watch Iron Fist. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, th- th- those two weeks might have been the slowest of my life. <laughs> hey, we have set precedent by abandoning Punisher after five episodes. We don't necessarily have to finish season two. No, we don't. I'm putting that out there right now. But we've given ourselves a get out of jail free card. But of course, it's going to tie heavily into the plot of all the other shows, isn't it? So we're going to feel. Compelled. Yeah, we might feel obligated. Ah oh dear. Uh, so so that's that's the thing. Uh, speaking of casting, Michael Shannon has been added to the Little Drummer Girl. This is from the same folk who did the Night Manager and uh, Park Chan Mook's the one directing it, which is why I care about it. <laughs> so, but Michael yeah. Shannon, of course, is also a reason to care about it. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård is already in it, as is Florence Pugh. So that's uh, good. And I know for a fact that's filming right now. Hmm. Interesting. So. Uh, yeah, so it follows young actress Charlie after she strikes up an acquaintance with an intriguing stranger while on holiday in Greece. But it rapidly becomes apparent that his intentions are far from romantic. The man is Becker, an Israeli intelligence officer who entangles her in a complex, high-stakes plot orchestrated by Israeli spy master Kurtz, who's, uh, that's Shannon. That's who Shannon's playing. It's Kurtz. Cool. I like the name uh, Kurtz. So obviously it's very Apocalypse Now, but uh, it's, a, it's a good name. Kurtz. I'm uh, expecting this maybe late this year. Yeah, I'd maybe see that. Uh, there's not enough Zs in, in names. I'd, I'd love a Z in my name. I don't know why you'd want one. It's a stupid letter. It's a great letter. Is it, though? It is. Great. It's like an S, but cooler. No, but it's not cooler. It's it's like it's it's like an S, but when you use it, you look like a wanker. <laughs> no, it's an edgy S. It is exactly. Cool. You look like a wanker. It, edgy. It, it's the science fiction version of an S. It's great. So it's pretty redundant, isn't it? You might as well just use an S. No, how would you spell Zach with an S? That'd be Sack. Yeah, but you just put a little ac- a lean on it a little. <laughs> so now you want to add accents into the mix? I just feel like I'd rather have an accent on an S to differentiate it than, than have a Z. No! Keep it simple! All those accents and umlauts are the problem with other languages. No! <laughs> keep it simple. Fine, fine. I'll, I'll stick with the Zs, whatever. It annoys me enough that I's and J's need the little dots at the top. Really? Not really. I don't care. but Because yeah. uh, so they're I, always there. I, I, it's consistent. I like the idea... uh, okay, true. I was going to say, I like the idea that you always write them capitals. So you, <laughs> never, you never have to dot them. Uh, I actually do if I'm if I'm handwriting I do typically actually write in caps because my my uh, cursive writing is absolutely atrocious atrocious tr- atrocious <laughs> my speaking is also atrocious apparently uh, I've not hey look we're doing this earlier than normal I I I've I've only been awake for a few hours this is weird for me doing the news at this time so all, all different kind of mistakes are going to be happening in this one I'm, I'm warning you now yeah yeah. Uh, 
So anyway, what are we on next? Uh, so here's, a, here's an interesting tidbit. The showrunner of Snowpiercer, which is currently in the works for TNT, has left. Uh, apparently, uh, creative differences have been cited as the reason for the for the departure. Mm, okay. I mean, less worrying at this stage, I think. You know, it's, it's still, you know, early-ish in development. That, I mean, it depends what the creative differences were, really, doesn't it? Yeah, they wanted something generic and shit, and he wanted a good show, and they got rid of. I mean, possibly, possibly. I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just that's the that's, that's the cynical view. Yeah. That's the worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, if that's the case, then okay, this is a you know a bad thing, but it could be just something else that you know they they fundamentally disagreed on, but no, not necessarily that's something that will make it a better or worse show. Yeah, Josh Friedman is the uh, the name of him, just for the for the record. Uh, all right. Next up, we so oh, we're on pilots now and stuff. So we're on the comedies. Okay, right? cool. There's some stuff. Got? There's some stuff in development, but a lot of this is pilot green lights. That's what a lot of the rest of this new show is going to be. Uh, so first up, ABC is giving a pilot order to a female-led reboot of the Greatest American Hero. Uh, I've never heard of the male original, <laughs> but hey, uh, reboots are all the rage. Uh, but hey, so this was a 1980s TV show. Uh, it's been based on. Uh, so this one's going to centre on Mira, a 30-year-old woman who loves tequila and karaoke and has spent her life searching and failing to find meaning, much to the uh, chagrin of her traditional Indian-American family. An inexplicable event occurs that will change the course of Mira's life forever when she's entrusted with a super suit to protect the planet. So it's a superhero comedy, just to sum it up in yeah. a sentence. Uh, so she's a bit of a loser, becomes a superhero and probably struggles with said superhero uh, responsibilities. Sounds exactly like what I'd expect from a superhero comedy. Yeah. Not yeah. that that's a bad thing. Like, it's, just, it's, it's the obvious thing to do because it probably would work. I'm not sure like what powers the suit gives her. It, it kind of implies that the suit gives her something, you know, like... Yeah. My, my worry with this would be that it'd be, it'll be too expensive for the... Let's say it's good, right, but it's not like a ratings boom. It could quickly get cancelled because no, it's just too expensive to make for a comedy. Yeah, uh, yeah it's true. Look, look at, I mean, even look at Powers, which I mean that was doing particularly bad, but that's the kind of thing where it would have to do really well to keep a show going with all those like you know bits of effects that come in yeah. and stuff, compared to you know the dramas that you know typically have a higher budget for that stuff. Uh, but but hey, uh, next up, so that's the only ABC comedy we've got. We've got a bunch of NBC. We have four NBC comedies, and they're all multi-camera. Oh, okay. I know. Uh, but hey, so the first one is called Lake Family, and it follows Aubrey and Artie, who form the tightest of sibling-like bonds growing up together in foster care, but they are now discovering that such closeness makes adulthood even more complicated. Now, I'm sure this is going to be later than what I'm thinking, but I- I'm thinking they've got some sort of weird foster brother-sister creepy incest thing going oh, no, on. Oh, that's exactly what I expected yeah. as well. Uh, which I don't think it is. I think it's just that they're too dependent on each other, and that's going to lead to some humour. Because they're, they're, they're not like ready for the world, so they're, they're too used to kind of relying on each other. I think that's what yeah. it's going to be. But So that's like family. The next one is called So Close, which follows hopeless romantics Riley and Kyle, who uh, they are close to setting... Uh, settling for the wrong partner, unaware that they live only blocks apart and they may be each other's soulmates. So it's neighbours who fall in love even though they're both maybe going to get engaged or married to someone else. Okay. Uh, as a comedy, this could be fine. Uh, as yeah. a drama, this would make me roll my eyes like so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the thing. I don't know what to expect from it as a comedy because, okay, that's the premise for, okay, that's how, that's your first episode. Right? They meet in the first episode, you have to Yeah, presume. yeah, they're going to meet in the first episode. And then it's just going to be, well, are we going to get together or are we going to go through with our other arrangements? Oh, no, no, you're jumping way too far ahead. They're going to meet in the first episode and they'll have a spark, but they won't talk about it. And they'll just be like a glancing look back at one of each other as they leave for the first time. And then it'll be all season, it'll be, you know, they'll be planning their yeah. weddings or whatever. Well, they'll be meeting and getting close, yeah, but it'll yeah, be yeah. innocent enough. But you can tell there's a spark and... Come on. Yeah. TV rating 101. No, I know. You, you've got the entire show done in the pilot. <laughs> I, I, I was meant that as the as the season. You know, like, and then they do that. But clearly I didn't make that clear enough. Well, to go along with Aubrey and Artie, we have a show called Abby's. 
God. What, what is it this week? <laughs> I don't know. Aubrey, Artie and Abby. Uh, so this is Abby's. This is, a, again, another multi-camera comedy. Uh, the series takes place at the titular Abby's, an unlicensed bar in San Diego, where the regulars enthusiastically enforce a unique set of rules that give them a sense of community and allow them to avoid the frustrating behaviour often found at other establishments. Uh Cool. I, I mean, it's, it's basically be it's, it's going to be like Cheers, but like it's like a place where they've just kind of it's, it said, "Oh, we're going to start our own bar that's kind of unlicensed, and we'll just all hang out and drink together." That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Um, yeah, maybe. I think it could be interesting. And in, it's obviously we'll have our core staff be the, you know the core characters be the the bar staff probably. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see how much it plays with, okay, you know, we'll change up the customers and, you know, we'll, we'll change it up like that for the situations. They may, they'll, you'll have your regulars, though. I, I, I guarantee... They'll, have, they'll probably have some regulars, yeah. I guarantee there'll be two or three, like, people who go to drink there all the time. They're, they're yeah, every probably. episode. Yeah, I, I would I would put money on it. Um, and the fourth one is called Friends-in-Law... Uh, it centers on Brian and Jake, polar opposites who must quickly figure out how to coexist when their respective best friends decide to get married. It's the perfect name for it. I'll give them that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they've, they've nailed the title. Nailed the title. I mean... It's fine. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I feel like a lot of the, these all sound very similar to me, where we've got an idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the comedy on any of them is going to be. What interests me about that last one is that making them the, the, the central characters is interesting to me because I feel like typically I can see that comedy in my head where you're focusing on the couple as the main characters and then their best friends are the side characters who you have a good laugh joking about how the fact they don't get along, right? Yeah, that you I can, have that rivalry. I can see that show. But having them be the main characters and them now suddenly have to like deal with the fact that they're always together, making that the focus is a little bit interesting because it's different than what I'd expect. No, no that's, that's true. So, I don't know. Uh, it could be good. I'm basically, I'm obviously not as into multi camera, but NBC in, in the past has had good multi camera comedies, so I, I can't they easily uh, shoot it down and say, hey, I don't want that. But, uh, but hey. All right. Let's move over to everyone's favourite network. Oh, here we go. CBS has got some comedies uh, piloted. Of course, these, these are all pilot orders, by the way. So far, everything's been a pilot order. Uh, so it's called I Mum So Hard. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> it is from former Two Broke Girls executive producer Michelle Nadir. I'm even uh, more out. <laughs> and also Rob Thomas, aka Veronica Mars, and uh, well, not aka, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, no, yes. Known he's, for, he's not known as that. Yeah, known for Veronica Mars and I Zombie. So there's someone there that he isn't, you know, trash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, very simple premise. It focuses on two mums who show how their friendship gets them through being wives and mothers. And it's a play, It's based on a, a web series by the same two people who are going to be in it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember yeah. talking about this when it was in development, actually. Yeah, I do as well. Uh, but hey, yeah, I mean, it's a fine idea for comedy. Uh, next I really C dislike the title, though. Next CBS pilot is History of Them. It is uh, a multi-camera hybrid comedy. Uh, the show is a multicultural ensemble about how two friends, Luna and Adam, meet, fall in love, and use the couple's social media as a guide. Uh, so this, I remember talking about this one as well. I basically said it's going to be how I met your mother, but instead of cutting to like you know, the interviews years later or whatever, it's going to be like all these social media posts that sort of lead into the the plots. I really hope they're allowed to use actual social media. You know, you know, because a lot of them they'll create mm. their own. And that will take me out of that so hard if if I'm looking at not not Twitter essentially. I'll laugh really hard though if it's actually the, the two kids in the future who are scrolling their old Facebook posts because then it is just how I met your mother. Except instead of hearing the story from dad, they're just scrolling the Facebook page. Yeah. For ten seasons. I, I think that the fun in that for me could come from the okay, this is what they presented on social media, but here's the reality. Yeah, you kind of see. Oh yeah, you sure. See the two versions. Yeah. They, they'll they'll see this happy photo at the end of the night, but we'll we'll see they were fighting all night until that photo or something. Yeah, yeah. There, there's potential there, but I can't see them. Uh, oddly, how I met your mother did that quite a lot as well. Actually, yeah. they had like whole episodes around like a photo where oh we all look happy. Hey, remember how we all hated each other that night? Which which is why I'm I'm comparing it to that show a lot. I feel yeah. like it's going to be 
conceptually it's very similar it's just a, it a slightly different device that's doing it yeah. uh, and then next up CBS has given another comedy pilot oh actually no, this is a, this is an ep- episode order oh sorry uh, uh, they've oh. changed uh, 13 episode order to another reboot uh, it's a revival actually uh, of Murphy Brown uh, which aired from 1988 to 1998, and the original star Candice uh, Bergen, Bergen, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, uh, is set to reprise her role uh, as as Murphy Brown, uh, who's a broadcast journalist. I just hit my mic. I apologise for that. Um, it is multi-camera. It'll be part of the 2018 to 2019 season, uh, and her character is returning to television news at a time of political and cultural upheaval. Uh, I'm going to give them credit here for re- 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 rebooting a TV show that was a big hit whilst I was a child and watched a lot of sitcoms and somehow never heard of this. Yeah, I, I don't know what this is. Uh, comedy newsroom, I guess. Yeah, I mean it. It sounds fine in concept. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be I'll be interested to see how much you know they say. Oh, you know the the, the uh, right now is is oh that's why she's back. Mm. Be interested to see how much they play up that side of things, and yeah, it could be really clunky or it could be really fun. Yeah, um, but we probably won't watch it because we're not seeing the original. I don't think it really matters. It matters to me. All right, fine, but they're not going to make it, so it matters. They're going to make it, oh, so sure. anyone can watch this. Oh sure, maybe maybe I'll check out the old show if if it's uh, available anywhere. Like I said, I've never given, heard given of it. Given that we've never heard of it, it's yeah. probably not. <laughs> uh, anyway, so next up we have an uh, uh, FX pilot for a comedy uh, called Compliance, and it's cast Courtney B. Vance and Mary Louise Parker. Uh, Courtney B. Vance has got a face that I've seen pop up in a lot of guest roles, but all the things that he was listed for, like I'd never, mm. you know, I'd, I'd never seen. Uh, but I do know his face. Uh, Mary Louise Parker... Uh, is mainly known for weeds. She was the, the lead character in that show. Oh, okay. Uh, I, yeah. I tried like two episodes of that and and backed out. Yeah, it never really appealed to me either. She was also in that uh, the the red movie with uh, Bruce Willis, and you know it was all the old yeah. action yeah, yeah, heroes yeah. coming back, uh, based on the comic book. Anyway, so this is a half hour comedy uh, centered around a private equity manager uh, played by Vance and his government appointed compliance monitor played by Parker, and that's all you get for uh, plot. For synopsis, not, not not a heavy description. Okay, but... Okay, then I, I hoped I'd have a little bit more to judge it on. But uh, that's the thing that's happening. Uh, so that's off the comedies. We're done with the comedies now. Have, have we watched any FX comedies? Like, um, um... Uh, are you counting Atlanta? Well, yeah. Okay, I forgot about that one. Um, I don't like Louis. Although obviously there's a lot of reasons not to like Louis now, <laughs> given uh, recent uh, the personal events that have come to light with him. But yeah. I was never fond of that. I, I tried it, never got into it. Mm. Um, it's not an FX comedy I like. Oh, it's always sunny. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking because obviously that is FXX now, right? Well, yeah, but it moved to that. Yeah, yeah, it moved to that. I'm thinking of you know, okay, you know, recent what to expect from them. Same with Archer. I think that moved to FXX as well. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so about the dramas, there's not a lot of um, juicy like cable streaming dramas this week. There's there's one notable one that you'll probably be into, uh, but other than that, it's mostly network pilots this week. Okay. So uh, brace yourself for that. Uh, the first thing is though, Apple <laughs> have ordered another show straight to series. Of course they have. We we might as well just have, and this is the Apple show of the week. Yeah. Uh, there's no description for it. Uh, or title, it's untitled. Now, probably saying why you mentioned it. Well, first of all, it's still news that Apple are making TV shows. The fact that they've not aired any yet and they're still announcing more shows is noteworthy. Secondly, the one thing we do have is the person who's going to write and direct the whole thing. It's going to be someone I care about, isn't it? Damien Chazelle. <laughs> Apple stealing the creators. Taking How? them away from projects that they could be doing that I'd care about. You probably care about this. Yeah, probably, but it's Apple, so I'll hate it anyway. <laughs> I mean, how much did you love La La Land and Whiplash? They're two of my favourite films. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, that means to me. Uh, so, so that's the thing. He's going to be writing, directing a whole TV show for 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 Apple. Cool. This, this joins Amazing Stories. It enjoys like three or four Reese Willispin produced projects. Uh, there was another sci fi show, I think, like two weeks ago. They are racking up content here. Uh, yeah. This yeah. is kind of insane. 
Anyway, uh, moving on. F, uh, not FX, sorry. Freeform. Not to get my F networks confused. Freeform is put in development. So this is not a pilot. So this is this is different. Uh, this is an hour-long retirement community drama. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it comes from writer uh, Lindsay Rosen. Uh, to Audley's listed here is oh, NBC's Cruel Intentions, which is weird because no one's ever been able to see that because it never happened. But yeah. whatever. Uh, it's untitled, but it's set in the vibrant retirement community uh, in Athens. Uh, I don't know that abbreviation for the state. What, G- what is it? GA. It's not, it's not Georgia, is it? <laughs> GA State. <laughs> oh, it is Georgia. Oh, there you go. Athens, oh, Georgia. That was, that was a good guess. Well, this, this is the thing, though. I read Athens, and my first thought is Greece. <laughs> I, I, I was there as well. And you took so long to say the G, the GA yeah. part because you were look, thinking through it yourself that I was going, okay, we're in Greece. It follows a core cast of elder characters through their life in present day 2018 as well as flashing back to and in time to stories about their past. The first season's flashbacks will be set in the 1960s when the elders were in their 20s, the same age as some of their present day grandchildren. I feel like I'd like this as a comedy. Yeah, it may be. It may be a bit of a comedy. It may be a bit one of like a dramedy it, it kind of thing. And and that's not to say it just it sounds bad and I don't want to watch it. Mm. Like, it sounds fine, but I can see this as a comedy. It doesn't feel like a freeform show, after it, Matt. It doesn't. And I'm going okay. Do you know what it, no, no, this is it. The flashbacks for the for the sixties. It's all just going to be love triangles. Young hot twenty somethings all in love triangles. Yeah, they kind of go, oh yeah, there's 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 flashbacks. They're going to be like seventy five percent of each episode. Probably, probably. Well, no, because they mentioned the, the hot twenty something grandkids as well now. So we're going to have to have equal amounts of them in the present day. That's true. Good so, point. Uh, but we got the twenty somethings in both time periods, so that so yeah, that, well, they, it's a free film show. Yeah, we covered. Uh, all right. So next up. CW have ordered a pilot for the reboot of Charmed. Okay. Of course, this is about the three sisters who are witches. Uh, it was a big show in the, the, the 90s into the early 2000s. Um, the new version is set in present day. Uh, this is this is, this is a quote from a, a CW exec, actually. Uh, but the fierce, funny, feminist reboot of the original series centres on three sisters in college, which is a little bit different. That makes them a little bit younger than the original show. Uh in a college, oh sorry, in a college town. Maybe they're not in college then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're not actually in college. Anyway, they're in a college town and they discover they are witches. Although it still wouldn't surprise me if they're actually in college. Let's be honest. CW, yeah. oh. Three Sisters, I feel like it's just kind of an obvious thing to do. Uh, between vanquishing supernatural demons, tearing down the patriarchy and maintaining familial bonds, uh, witches work is never done. Uh the sad part about this news story, though, is it reminded me of the last time they tried to reboot Charmed, and I remembered this news story when I read it. When I read the paragraph, yeah. I thought, oh, I remember this this reboot attempt, and I actually like the sound of this one much better. I mean, this one could be good. This one could be fine. Yeah. But uh, the one they tried to do a few years ago is that we're going to do a period piece set in the 70s with mm, Three Witches, I and I thought, oh, that sounds quite cool. That like a nice spin on it, and now they'll just do it in present day. Uh, so that, that's you know fair enough. It, it could still be good. It could still work. And it could. The original Charmed, well, I watched a lot of it mainly because I was a teenage boy and Alyssa Milano was on it. Uh, I mean, the other sisters were nice too, but Alyssa Milano been the main the main one. Uh, it was never great. It was very much the poor man's hit television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes. You know, I, it, I, I will concede to that. Yeah, because you know it was like similar plots with demons and monsters and even vampires occasionally, and but it was very light. It, it didn't have the wit to it. It didn't have the. I mean, it was kind of likable because the actresses were quite good and you kind of liked the characters well enough. But it wasn't like Buffy. It wasn't as deep as that. It wasn't as well written as that. Uh, so how, that, how, sorry, how, how did we get into you just praising Buffy again? Because Buffy's great, and I think it's always worth praising. But hey, it's, come on, this was WB's other supernatural. It was, and and again, this is like, yeah, okay, the CW are going to do this. It, it feels like inevitable that it's going to happen at some point. But I think there's genuine room for improvement. They they could do a good charm show. I think there's I possible. Can't wait for the day they announce a Buffy show again. No Whedon, no sale. I can't wait. <laughs> I tell you what, though, the pilot review of that will be 
Oh, oh, oh. If if it, if it's anything less than excellent, oh, I'll be cutting through that with a chainsaw. Oh yeah, because the 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 Buffy had an excellent pilot, didn't it? It doesn't matter what how Buffy's pilot was. It, 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 what matters is that I have the entire legacy to compare it to. Are you giving me this non-written written dialogue from those characters that are meant to be Buffy, Willow, Xander, and Giles? Nah. Nah. Oh, one day. One day it's going to happen. I can, I can guess my ass. They tried to do a movie a few years ago and it all fell through. So, uh, yeah, suck it. Suck it, rights owners. Um, but, but yeah, so the charm could be good. There's a potential. I, I think it's funny. I wonder if this is why they were actually quite... Or maybe about when Sabrina went to Netflix, they were more likely to pick this up because they thought, oh, we don't have a, a witch show on our network. This is getting paired with Riverdale. I can see that. Yeah, nine o'clock slot after Riverdale. Yeah, I can I can totally see that. Uh, but I do I do genuinely think that had they got Sabrina on the network, they might not have picked this up because you know I two witch shows. You don't don't yeah. need both of them. Uh, but no, in this sense, we get maybe a good charm show, and we also get a potentially better Sabrina show because it's on Netflix. Probably a better. Probably. So no, that's good. Uh, speaking of CW, they've also ordered a pilot called Dead Inside, uh, and I remember talking about this when it was uh, in development. Uh, from writer Katie Lovejoy and producer Bill Lawrence in Dead Inside, uh, penned by Lovejoy, after surviving an explosion that killed her hotshot detective big brother, an underachieving cop, uh, under, sorry, underachieving beat cop, starts seeing his ghost, flipping their sibling dynamic on its head and allowing her to truly live her life for the first time as they work together to help crime victims, both living and dead, and figure out the unfinished, figuring out that the unfinished business keeping his spirit on earth. Um, I love how I went back and corrected myself and I did in the beat part of the beat cop when i didn't really need to uh, under- no no it's, it's 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 a cop show one's a ghost uh, underachieving cop would have fit the sentence fine but i care about accuracy that i went back and was pointed out that i made a mistake that's how much i care about being transparent folks that, that that's honesty that's integrity sure integrity unlike that menace it's all right i'm saving something that i think you've missed so i'm, gonna, I'm, I'm ready to whip it out of the end i don't want you whipping the earth out at the end of the show <laughs> Keep your, your ginger tadger to yourself. I promise nothing. Also, I love that I probably taught a lot of people the word tadger there for penis. <laughs> you probably did, yeah. <laughs> yes, ta- ta- tadger is a word for penis, if, if you didn't know that. Uh, uh, We're an educational show, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. We uh, are now. So to me, this feels like it's kind of this. Not that they had one this past season, but you know, this feels like frequency for them this year. Yeah. This one, uh, but potentially fine. Plays a buddy cop show with one's a ghost. <laughs> like that could work. That could be fun. Uh, I think this is one that is. You know, I think this year we didn't have a lot of network shows that we thought were willing, were, that were worth checking out. I feel like this certainly Charmed will check out when it oh, happens. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see if they actually happen yet. Oh, that's true. I, I think Charmed is a pretty much a dead cert, though. I feel like I'd be surprised if they if Unless they act that. Unless it's just outright bad. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but if, if this happens, I feel like this is another one we'll try and see if it if it's any good. Because yeah. it, you know, this is the type of network shows that might end up being good. They can, yeah. Yeah, uh, I feel like we've not had. I feel like the faith in that's kind of diminished over the last couple of years because it's been a while since things like Chuck and Fringe and all the other like good network shows that I liked for a long time. I feel like I used to have always two or three at one time that I loved. And now it's just S.H.I.E.L.D. And okay, I like the CW shows, but they're kind of on a different, you know, Yeah, category. they're kind of in their own little bubble, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, and even S.H.I.E.L.D.'s a, super, a superhero-based show. So, yeah. yeah. In terms of original network shows, there's nothing we're watching right now. No. I was I was just racking my brains, just in no. case I was watching something you're not, but the, no. Well, Timeless, I guess. We mentioned Timeless earlier. I oh, guess that, oh, yeah. That's the one that kind of counts, yeah. Timeless. I think the last one we had that we... I mean, we had, like, Pitch along with, like, Stream Queens for a while. We liked those. Yeah, we were enjoying The Exorcist. Well, that's not original, but yeah. Well, yeah, no, not original, but I'm just saying Network. Yeah, not a superhero show. Uh, yeah. And I'll probably go back and finish that second season, actually, at some I point. I probably will as well, yeah. I, 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 did, I did like it. We just, it, was, it was a time thing, and not like people were watching the reviews, so it was just kind of like, okay, right, it's clearly this is not a priority. Um. Anyway... So next up, uh, we're going to ABC for their their drama pilots for the week. So first up, uh, we mentioned this when it was first announced as in development. Now it's got a pilot order. Uh, Get Christy Love, which was a TV movie in ABC, uh, mm. you know, in, in the seventies, I think. 
uh, long, long, long time ago. Interestingly, I accidentally just kind of gave us a nice, uh, nice segue into it because I mentioned something that is relevant to it. Uh, because not only has it been greenlit for the pilot, uh, it's actually be, be, the lead role's been cast. Uh, so, let me just find the name. There you go. Uh, Kaylee Bunbury, who was the lead role in Pitch. Yeah, I thought that, I recognised the name. Has been cast in this. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just I forgot. I had to find her name. It was, it, was, it was a big paragraph of text with a bunch of producers listed, and I'm like, no, where's the goddamn star? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so that is going to premiere in the fall, should it uh, should it you know, go through and be picked up for series. Uh, but then you get Christy Love, uh, which is a slightly different title because there's no exclamation mark at the end of it, which the original had. Um, it's an action-packed, music-driven drama that centers on Christy Love, an African-American female CIA agent who leads an elite ops unit. She transforms into whomever she needs to get the job done, especially when it's down to the wire and the stakes are life and death. The high-adrenaline missions of the series are anchored by an emotional mystery about Christy's first love. Unearthing the truth about this relationship will put the biggest mission in <laughs> will be the biggest mission impossible for her life. You know... That plot doesn't really excite me all that much. I think the idea of that in the seventies excites me way more than it does now. It sounds fun, potentially. And I like I like Kaylee Brad, uh, Bunbury. So <laughs> you will learn her name. Oh well, Bunbury. I keep wanting to say Bradbury. Bunbury. Bunbury. Yeah. Bunbury. You'll get there. Kaylee. I mean, you probably won't. You you butcher most people's you, names. You know what? So. I'm just going to pretend we're good friends. And I can use her first name, Kaylee. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. Kaylee quite a bit. So. So, she's good. Yeah, she's good. She was great in pitch. Uh, I'm still upset that got cancelled, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice show. Damn cliffhanger, bastards! It's the arrogance that assuming you're coming back for another season that upsets me. I know, but but I get it. Like, I, I you know what? I think they try and I think they do it to try and like bait the network. They're like, look, you've yeah. got people waiting for this now. But they this don't isn't care. Me. You got to you got to give us yeah. more. But the network have proved time and time again they don't give a shit. No, <laughs> they really I don't, don't know why they shit. keep trying it. Uh, but hey, all right. So sticking with ABC, they've also given a pilot order to False Prophets, a comedic soap <laughs> set in the world of cosmetics marketing. Oh, I'm so out. <laughs> From Code Black writer producer Kayla Alpert, uh, False Prophets is described as a desperate housewife meets Glengarry Glen Ross. It follows a team of down and out women in suburban Arizona as they fight their way to the top of the cutthroat world of multi level marketing cosmetics business. I'm I'm not touching that. No, nah, me neither. <laughs> You you thought about going? No, we're watching it just to make me go through that, but mm-hmm. you don't want to put yourself through it, do you? I could take the hit. <laughs> mm. No, 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 I don't think you can. I could take the hit. Fine, you know what? I won't, I won't make you agree to this one. You don't have to make me agree to anything else. That's, oh, that's, yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. You're trying to get out of last night's conversation, aren't you? You were drunk. It didn't count. Uh, ABC is <laughs> also... <laughs> they've put in development... This is not a pilot. They've put in development a legal drama called Illusion of Justice. I like that title. It's probably the best title for a legal drama I've seen. Honestly, I think it should be the title of a Batman story. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good comic arc. Batman Illusion of Justice. That's a good arc for one of one of his comics. Uh, but yeah, it's based on a book by Jerome F. Booting. Uh, or Buting, I should say. It's a B-U-T. Buting. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Illusion of Justice is a fictional show. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> it wouldn't be here if it was thingy. But anyway... Uh, but I think the reason why they're mentioning it is because uh, Buting is one of the lawyers uh, for Stephen Avery, of course, was uh, the, the subject of Netflix's documentary, Making a Murderer. Uh, but the series described it as equal parts legal procedural and family drama, focusing on a husband and wife who balance raising their children with running a criminal defence firm, specialising in under- underdog clients who face esteemably insurmountable odds. Uh, I feel like you don't need both There's of those There's a lot of there. big words there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's for us. Legal drama. No. Uh, what I think is funny, though, the husband and wife team, it reminds me of one that... We, I don't know if it ever actually became a show. Remember last year we had this development pitch for... Um, the, the husband and wife were like... Uh, one was the, the prosecutor and one was the, de- the defence. Oh, yeah, and they go home and they have to put it aside. Yeah, yeah. It reminds yeah, me a little bit of that. Yeah, recall that. Yeah. With, with less uh, conflict, I guess, but... This is based on a true story, or a real people, at the very least. Maybe not a true stories. Maybe they're wrong way of saying that, but because the cases, I'm sure, will be all 
fictional, yeah. or at least for the most part. Maybe they'll do the odds. Oh, there's one out the vault of our case files. Yeah, kind of thing. Uh, next up, ABC pile order. Yes, we're still on ABC. Yeah, quite a few this week. Uh, it's called Savage. Sorry, sorry. It's called Salvage. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was that was a particularly <laughs> this bad is mess awful. Up. That was a particularly bad mess up. It's called Salvage. It follows an ex cop and. Uh, named Jimmy Hill, who just wants to be left alone after moving back home to rural Florida. But when a local murder is linked to the sunken treasure of a lost Spanish galleon, he is drawn into the investigation by an idealistic deputy and pitted against the powerful town patriarch, outside criminal agents and his own father. That was really boring, and then they mentioned sunken Spanish treasure, and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. What's happening? I, I fucked up a little when I heard also, that. Also, can oh. I just point out, I feel like I have never said the word patriarch in my life, and in this news show every week, they, they seem to love putting the word patriarch or patriarchy in like almost like every second news story. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's there a lot. They use it a lot. It's weird. They, they love to use that word. But hey. They do. Um... Yeah, this will probably suck, but... Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I, at least, I at least perked up a little bit with the sunken treasure part. Yeah. Even though it'll probably mostly just be a typical crime drama on land. Yeah, definitely. With the occasional diving for treasure, <laughs> maybe. Um, but uh, then next up, ABC, again, ordered a pilot for... Uh, sorry, For Love. That's the name of the show. Uh, it's For Love. For Love, okay. Yeah. Uh, is described as an epic love triangle <laughs> set against a grounded secret world of magic in present day New Orleans. In the show, protagonist Hope Castile uh, is shocked when she gets a call from her fiancé five years after he was killed. Ooh. I'm good. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't even care that magic's in it. Not that I particularly like magic anyway, but like that would be the thing that would maybe perk us up, but no. Epic love triangle. Piss off. <laughs> Yeah, is, is, my, is my thing. Alright, so moving over to NBC uh, for our next pilot. Uh, they've ordered The Enemy Within. Unfortunately, this has nothing to do with XCOM, uh, which which I, I'd have been hoping for. And I cracked that joke when Connor was drunk last night, and he's, he's I'd not... I'd give you the exact same face, I'm sure. No, no. Oh, you did not. You laughed. No, no, and, then, no, no, and, and then you drunkly went, oh no, I get XCOM DLC references, thank you very much. That was That was your response to my, my joke because uh, I was doing the news whilst he was drunk I didn't tell him everything I was I was specifically withholding things uh, intentionally but I told him the odd thing uh, the, the boring ones I mean, knowing <laughs> I wouldn't really remember them yeah uh, but he laughed at that joke so that's why I'm brilliant because he, he gave me such a shitty well, everything, look everything's funny when you're drunk it's fine Anyway, so The Enemy Within is a character-driven in, driven investigative thriller set in the world of counterintelligence. It focuses on former CIA agent Erica Wolfe, the most notorious traitor in modern history and most hated woman in America, who is brought out of federal supermax prison by the FBI to help stop some of the most dangerous acts of espionage threatening the United States today. It's a cop show, but one's a criminal. No, I'm going to say it sounds more like the blacklist. It's just yeah, you know, you, you got this big criminal give, giving intel and helping the cases. They're, tr- they're trying to do Hannibal with it, aren't they? Like Silence of the Lambs style. Yeah, I'm not getting the dark vibe from that. That's no, why I'm no, but to, in concept. That's why I'm compared to the blacklist because it's a bit more like that in tone. Th- at least it feels like. I mean, I, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Maybe the, we'll get a trailer and it'll be like clowns and comical things, and but probably not. Unlikely, yeah. It's probably as bland as it sounds. Uh, next up, we got uh, another uh, pilot from NBC. This one is actually one that I do remember from development and is potentially interesting. It comes from Robert Zemeckis. It's called Manifest. You may remember this. Yeah, I do. It's described as a mystery thriller. A plane disappears from radar and returns years later after being untraceable and presumed lost at sea. No time has passed for those on the plane, but for the loved ones at home, many years have gone by. Uh, the series follows their personal lives as well as the larger mystery and purpose that is their destiny. That last line is very cheesy, but it sounds yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I like the concept. I hope it's not too much about what happened. This is a this is one where I'd like it to take the leftovers route of. Don't get into what happened too much. It doesn't really matter. Just deal with the effects of, okay, this has happened. Live with it. I could go either way. Eh, okay. I, I, I would I would just as much like a show about the mystery and the, 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 the paranormal side of it and try to 
uncover I, I get it. that. I just don't... I don't know if, I, if it needs it. On NBC, I'm going to assume that that'll be much better than the, the, the drama of a leftover, leftover that, style that, show. That, that, that's fair. So I, I, that on NBC, the mystery appeals to me more than the drama does. Yeah, okay. I can't really argue with that. Because you know it's going to be like five years and like some of them, have, like their, their spouses have remarried thinking they're dead. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's going to be love triangles all over the goddamn place. All right, so uh, we're moving over to CBS. And they have they have a show which has been ordered to pilot. Uh, do, you, do you remember when I told you that there was a really generic titled CBS show last night when you were drunk? I remember you telling me that. I don't, did you tell me the title? I did, yes. Yeah. I don't remember it. I think that's just because it's so generic, though. But I do remember this part of that conversation. Hmm. Well, the show is called Murder. <laughs> yeah. CBS show called Murder. Uh, so, yeah, it's based on a BBC miniseries. Uh, it's written by Amanda Green... Uh, the investigative drama explores crimes through the unique and often conflicting perspectives of cops and killers, witnesses and victims, friends and family. Shot like a true crime documentary, the series invites the audience inside the emotional journey of an investigation, allowing them to discern the truth and judge the suspect's guilt or innocence for themselves. If it wasn't on CBS, I'd say it sounds fine. Fair enough. We'll move on. I have nothing to say. CBS yeah. show. Um, uh, and finally, the last news item of the week. Also, no, no, it's not. Also the CBS pilot order. Uh, but this one comes from Greg Belanti, so mildly more interesting. It's called God Friended Me. You might remember this from the development cycle because I remember talking about it. Yeah. It revolves around an outspoken atheist whose life is turned upside down when he's friended by God on Facebook. Uh, the proximity to the Holy Spirit makes him an agent of change in the lives of those around him. That could be funny. It does sound like it could be fun. But hey, uh, this is okay. So that's, that's, that's pilots that are happening. Uh, for the mo- that was most of them. There was a couple in development, but most the vast majority of all those shows were pilot orders. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so what's the thing I've missed that you're excited this to... This is, frankly, the biggest news TV news story of the week. And I'm shocked that you don't have this. This, this has come from Variety. And this is something getting a pilot production commitment at FX. This is the What We Do in the Shadows TV show. I did not see this at all. No, no. This this is coming from Jermaine Clement and and Taika Waititi. There, he's he's writing and yeah, what one's writing, one's directing. Uh, obviously, I think they co-directed the film, but uh, they're they're splitting up the duties for this. Uh, it's going to star Matt Berry. This is going to be a Matt a, Berry, you see. I, I do say, yes. Okay, uh, it's going to be a half-hour series. Um, they've said it's going to be in the US instead of New Zealand. But that's pretty much all we know. They're not actually telling us a lot about the show. But, yeah. I can't believe you missed this. I'm corroborating this story. I don't trust Connor. Uh, Alright, I'm uh, looking at the Variety article now. But Hmm... Hey, you know what? So sometimes, despite the fact that I, I scour multiple sites, sometimes your eye just doesn't catch something. Because you, you have to learn to filter out a lot of the... No, no, that's true. I'm, I'm just stories, surprised but... you didn't see this one around. I saw it on Twitter quite a bit. Uh, I did not. I actually did not hear about this. I mean, I knew there was a show supposedly in development from a while ago, but I, I didn't... Yeah, yeah, this is new details. I did not see this news. Oh, there you go. You got it now? Yeah, I, I saw it and closed yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll take your word for the details. It's, it's, but... it's been verified. That, yeah. That, yeah, this is official now. It's official, yes, yes. This should have been in the comedy section. I apologise, everyone. Uh, I, the integrity I spoke of earlier has been dwindled. Uh, I am shamed. I will commit seppuku uh, upon finishing this yes. video. D- don't expect a video next week. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes uh, sounds good. I like the movie. I do too. I like the people involved. I like Matt Berry a lot. I like Matt Berry a lot too. Uh, and yeah, so no, I, 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 I am on board with, with this comedy. Uh, not something we'll probably review because it is just a comedy and we don't typically review comedies. Yeah. But uh, exciting all the same. Just to, just to see how it stacks up. I might do the pilot, yeah, and review yeah. the pilot. But yeah. Uh, but hey, that's cool. So there you go. That, that's this week's news. Yeah, yeah, it is now. Yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. Yeah, you had one thing well, to add on. So usually when I have a thing that you've missed, it's something stupid that only I care about. And you're like, yeah, I, I, I saw that, I ignored it. 
this one, I'm taking my moment for, for once. Okay, look, I missed one legitimately good news story. What what what, what are we at? Episode 180 or something like that? I don't know, I can't check. You took away the numbers. Yeah, I renumbered for the start of the year. <laughs> uh, but, yeah we're, yeah, we're at 185 or something like that. I'm sorry, I missed one legitimately good TV news story. All right? Yeah, but, I mean, this is only the fourth one of the year. This is a bad precedent you're setting. <sighs> you're slacking. Give me strength. Give me strength. Uh, so, what we do now is we pick our favourite episode of TV of the week. Yeah. Uh, so you got a few things to pick from. You got the first episode of Counterpart and the Alienist. You got Star Trek Discovery. You got Agents of Shield. You have the DC shows that you may have watched up until this point, uh, which may not be many it's of them. Just Arrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there goes that plan. Um, yeah. But that's what that's what you've got. That's what your options are. I, I've watched everything but Black Lightning. I've not watched, got not got into that yet. But okay. uh, I mean, yeah. this is a shame because. If you'd asked me last week, I'd said I wanted to give it to Counterpart, but it just was it was good, but it's not good enough that I can say, oh, that was the best thing of the week. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had a particularly fantastic episode this week. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm giving it to S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, I'm also going to give it to S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, it was a great episode. Uh, I, I, I did quite enjoy Supergirl as well, uh, I'll mention. Uh, of the ones I've watched. Uh, did not particularly enjoy this week's Star Trek Discovery. That was a, a weaker episode. We we were quite negative. We got a few dislikes on the video for being negative. But yeah, hey. it wasn't a bad episode. It just wasn't as good as the last handful yeah. have been. Uh, I just I thought it flubbed. We've been we've been building up to a certain reveal for a while, and I felt like it was a bit of a whiff of a moment. It was a bit, so, yeah. You know, uh, you can't can't win them all. But hey, uh, Alienist, as we said, we weren't so keen on. The counterpart was pretty good. Uh, hopefully, it'll keep sort of uh, you know improving, getting yeah, better. It was a little bit bloated, but. Over some time, that can get paired by, you know, get, yeah. get into a bit more depth. Yeah, we're looking forward to checking out episode two. Uh, but hey, so so that's, there you go. That, that, that is, is that us? Are we done with this week's TV news? I think we are. I think so, yeah. Cool. What do I usually say at the end? Uh, don't know, some random plug-in bollocks. I tune out at this point. <laughs> so helpful, Connor. So, so I don't know, you go, what's coming next week? No. Uh, I, did, I, I think I, you did that at the start, yeah. No, um, that shows how much just... attention you pay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Jeez, like, subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the news items and the and the comments below. That's uh, the one that you do. Yeah, do that. Like, you know all that stuff. Uh, get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show, head over to patreon dot com slash mail fuzz tv, and you can do that over there. There's a link in the description and other stuff and all, all sorts and shenanigans and yeah. I've still not woken up, I'm not going to lie. No, I mean, we'll, we'll see you in the movie news, maybe, because, you know, pretty similar. It's, yeah, it's as much of a shambles. Peter might be slightly more awake. I'll be, I'll be more awake for that one, because we're doing that uh, in a few hours' time. Got the, we've got the, the Oscar nominations to talk about. That, that's true, we do have the Oscar nominations to talk about. We have uh, a decent amount of trailers, although not as many as the previous two weeks. That said, there could have been more since I looked last night, so I won't promise that there's less than the previous two weeks quite yet, but... At the time of recording, there's less trailers in the past two weeks on the movie news, but we'll see. Uh, but regardless, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Always appreciate it. Well, like you can tell, I've not woken up yet. I'm, I'm just I, I'm just going around in circles. I'm just slurring my way through this outro. Thank you very much for watching, all of you guys. Always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time. Have you got any? V